After three years of renovation, the opera in Geneva is open to the public again. 70 million Swiss francs were the costs of the renovation and now the Grand Theatre shines in splendor. Mr. Richter, so for three years this uh, theatre was closed for renovation and the renovation required courage and a lot of money, of course, public funding. Why was this needed? You know, the Opera House was reopened after um, a, a long break of an almost nine years in 1962. And since then, there, haven't been any, there hasn't been any major renovation project. There was a project in the 90s when they have removed uh, the seats. Uh, and there was also in the 70s and the 90s, there were a few um, replacement of, of uh, mechanical or, or just scenery, uh, scenographic stuff. But there were no major renovation projects. And they, now um, we had problems on various levels. Originally, this was a long discussion because the people thought, well, will the audience, will they notice or will they see whether the, the important sum of money is going to be? Um, and uh, originally there was, uh, there was discussion about it. And then all of a sudden they've, they've noticed uh, that uh, the, the uh, very famous um, historic parts of the building, which is the foyer, uh, and also the, the, the front. Mm -hmm. Meantime, they have been damaged. And uh, so the decision was made to renovate and to restore mm -hmm. the whole historic part of the building. Yeah, it's, it's full yeah. of splendor and gold yes. now. It's, it's, it's a remarkable work that had been done. When they started the project here, they've noticed that in the basement uh, there were spaces and there were also paintings, wall paintings, that had been uh, covered. I mean, everything had been uh, taken out and now brought to, to a new splendor. Geneva is known to be a city of simplicity, you know, being Protestant and everything. Um, I say uh, Geneva is a city of understatement, which is, which is very good. But um, the building uh, was um, built the first time at this, uh, about the same period as the Palais Garnier in Paris. Mm -hmm. And it was also much inspired by the, by the, the style and the architecture of, uh, of the Palais Garnier. So let's come back to the renovation. I mean, 70 million Swiss francs, three years, um, which were paid by the city of Geneva. And then you opened now in, in February. It was supposed to be opened before. Why did it take so long? Uh, there have been several reasons. Of course, this was a, a, a project um, led by public administration and uh, there had been many aspects being considered uh, until uh, the, the proper works could start. When I took on here in 2009, um, after a couple of months, the project was announced as Travaux 2014, which means uh, renovation works in 2014. And uh, if you see that we started late uh, 15, took a bit longer uh, just to start it. On the other hand, they've noticed when they remade the whole project with the restoration aspect also, there have been many, many um, uh, works, so many, many places that they, they had to interfere. Then they announced us that it might take a year and a half, maybe two years. And uh, of course, this is extremely difficult when you have to plan an opera season. We have here with our structure about uh, a planning period of from four years ahead. And if you have to change that, uh, particularly if you have to change it a relative short notice, because we had not been informed in time that it will take longer, um, so this is a nightmare. And uh, finally, <laughs> this year in February, it worked out. How happy are you with that? Well, I'm very happy that we're back here. Um, the problem is, and, and we have to face that, that not everything is finished as it should have been. Um, so uh, we had, we had our, the final uh, authorization or certificate to exploit the, the, the building just a couple of hours before the, the opening date which is uh, not very comfortable, I can tell you. So you didn't uh, know if you could actually open it uh, until know. hours we, before? We did, well, we, we were planning it, but um, we did not have any authorization. So no, normally, uh, you have for a project like this, because uh, everybody expected us to reopen with a prestigious project, which is uh, Wagner's Ring. <laughs> It 
is, is a new production we just made before closing down the house and we had a huge success. So we thought this is, this is the, uh, the, the right project to, uh, to reopen with. But uh, it's an enormous project also from the logistics side. And uh, we could not uh, open the house for friends or, or, or people who normally would admit for the dress rehearsals because we did have, didn't have any authorization. So, so it is really, that was really very, very tight. And still, um, we're sitting here in one of the most beautiful parts of the building, but uh, believe me, behind the doors, there, there's still a lot of work to do. During the renovation, you also had this uh, temporary uh, stage okay. um, at the UNO, and I, th I think that that was quite successful, right? You were also able to get new audience, I knew exactly if the project out of the house will last longer than one full season, we need a um, structure to replace uh, our normal situation because otherwise uh, the, the, company, the, the company will uh, be in great trouble. Uh, then I suggested to my board to look for a replacing structure. And then I've suggested something to them which uh, um, where, where they, really the whole board supported me strongly on that. But uh, of course that was actually building another space, a temporary space, for the period out of the house, which was hoped to be a year and a half. Ended up being so, three. Yes. So I, I started with them very early uh, and I made a suggestion which I thought was a, was a very good, very interesting thing to do for the Geneva situation particularly. Uh, which was uh, a structure that had been built by the Comédie Française in Paris. The only thing is we had to, to get the financing uh, exclusively on the private side because it would, have taken, it would have taken much too long to, to engage a process to getting the funds, public funds, uh, which had to be added to the already important sum of the renovation of here. So that would have been impossible within the, within the time scale. It should be in the interest of the city of Geneva to support a temporary opera. I agree, everybody agrees, but that, was, that would have been, we would have been out of schedule. And also um, the, 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 the process of getting uh, uh, all the necessary votes you know, there are so many, uh, the, I don't know any city in the world which, uh, which has a majority in the city council of opera goers. Uh, to vote for important budgets, uh, particularly for a project like, a, like an opera house or something, is, this is something very particular. And we were under time pressure, so we have decided, so if we want to have a chance to, to build that and to set it up in time, um, uh, we have to look for ourselves. We, we have been able to find the funds. There are some foundations and our, also the Society of Friends in Geneva. Um, as I said, uh, they, they don't show off, but there is a very, very healthy, very elegant understatement. And we, found a, we, 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 were, we were able to find uh, enough funds to build that. It was private funds, this renovation was public funds, but now the, for the programmation you also have a lot of sponsors. And we have some sponsors, we have uh, some donors. Um, we have actually to find, I would say, in the average about five millions per year on private money. On private money. Yeah. And how much do you need uh, during the year for the programmation? We need about 20 millions, 25 millions. Uh, depends and so so actually for everything what we do here as artistic activity uh, we have to to do the funding ourselves either the box office or private funding or other incomes um, and subsidies are basically the idea is but subsidies are given just to guarantee the structure of the house the, fu the fonctionnement which is which is the the salaries of the the staff the permanent stuff, not the temporary stuff, and uh, all the, the fixed costs. We actually face a situation that this golden rule is not working 100% anymore because there is a mechanism on salaries and on fixed costs uh, which uh, made 
um, gave an increase to, to that cost and uh, which had not been followed by the, an increase of subsidies. This is a major problem of, the, of our institution, but fortunately we were doing very, very well these last uh, years, um, having successful seasons. Sometimes it was a bit tight, we managed to end the, uh, the budget year in, in, in a good balance. You have 1,500 seats more or less that you sell, um, so usually it's what is it sold out? Mostly? We have a, we have an attendance rate which is uh, which varies a little bit, but it, it goes towards the ninety percent, okay. which is very high. I mean, it's the biggest opera in Switzerland. Then. Yes, yeah, it's the yeah. biggest biggest opera house uh, by far. Uh, Zurich has a thousand one hundred. Uh, yes, when we, La have, Klugar, we have between one thousand five hundred one and six hundred, and and uh, but of course we do not. It's difficult to compare because um, Geneva follows a little bit the, 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 the system of the Latin countries and we are following the stagione system, which is uh, we don't have our own ensemble of, uh, of uh, resident uh, soloists. Uh, we have a resident orchestra, we have a resident chorus, we have a resident ballet company, but we, uh, on every production we have to build a new company which uh, uh, where we invite uh, uh, international soloists to join us uh, and um, that means also that basically in one period we just play one production. I would like to come back to the investors you mentioned so Ballet Ensemble which is um, sponsored also by Indosuits Wealth Management and I was wondering why are they supporting are they uh, ex are they waiting or expe expecting a return of investment? Well, certainly, cert certainly. Uh, I mean, there is. I don't know whether it's it's a proper return of this investment, but definitely is one thing. I mean, if uh, um, uh, companies active on the financial or the economic uh, sector, they if they uh, um, invest in an artistic project. It has got to do with prestige. It has, has also to do, got to do with social conscience because uh, people that, that uh, companies that are based here in Geneva and the area, they profit from uh, from the local infrastructure, uh, including also there are certain financial uh, advantages, uh, and in return. Um, uh, one would expect a certain uh, engagement. Uh, towards uh, institutions that cannot be profitable. Mm -hmm. Opera is n n nowhere in the world is profitable in that sense. But of course, um, you know, we have many, many companies here who are using these spaces here for purpose of their own policy. The private partnership between companies or foundations uh, and an, a cultural institution as ours is profitable in the end. Um, but uh, is not profitable in a way that you can just at the end of the evening just <laughs> make, say well, we, we've paid that that amount and um, the return is is already that so it's, it's a bit more complicated we, we call we call it our inductive uh, there is an inductive return which is which is uh, a little bit more complicated to identify. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, I mean, uh, with such a big renovation and then so many sponsors, all that you somehow also need to give something back? Are you trying to attract new audiences? Yes. And, and the fact that we have been out of the house playing in another structure, um, we, were, uh, we were very able to aim also to new audiences. There's a simple aspect, you know, an opera house like this one, particularly a foyer like this, uh, you have a, just the entrance is, uh, is something very uh, what we call festive. Very often people dress up to come here and uh, to have a, a gala evening or something. I think the social structures in cities have changed uh, during the last uh, 30, 40 years. And uh, there are many people who don't have this tradition by their families or by their bringing up or something. Uh, sometimes uh, they, they don't get that easy access 
to that what happens inside, because what happens inside is very popular. But the problem is to, to, to go there, to access to that, has to do with also with a, a, a certain conventional part of it, dressing up or, or, or maybe knowing something about it, which is not necessary at all. So you have and, to go uh, out? Uh, and yeah, you have to go out, you have to go out really and, and present actually to, 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 to teach people a little bit about their activities. And the Opera de Nation, which is a, a structure just a wooden structure, uh, easy, easy to access. It's, uh, it's an, uh, has another atmosphere. In fact, we noticed that, first of all, at the Opera des Nations, uh, we all of a sudden had an audience which was, in the average, slightly younger than what, what, we, what we were used to have here. And we had quite an important amount of people who admitted they've never been in an opera house before. So you're leaving in September this year? I'm leaving on a I'm high? leaving at the end of this season. I'm leaving on, in July. Oh, in July already. Yes. So yes. in September is when your successor starts. Yes. So what are your plans? I heard you're retiring. I'm retiring. You know, I'm the, I think I'm probably the, the opera director, which is the longest uh, in, uh, in office. I think it's time to hand that over to someone of a younger generation. I thought um, that the renovation will be over much earlier, so I would have had a little, another, uh, the, the aspect of my finale would have been a bit different, but uh, in theatre it never happens as you expect. I'm very privileged and, and lucky that I could decide when I want to leave and when, I, when it's time for change. Okay, great. Then all the best for the future. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.